Hi everyone, today we're going to check out the BMW iX2 together. Now, this isn't going to be a full review of the car, it's more like a walkthrough of what you get from the iX2 here in Singapore. Now, straight off, I'm sure you could tell that this is a full electric car from this closed off grille over here, or maybe from the blue ring around the BMW logo. This is the iX2 eDrive 20, and it's the only version of the iX2 that you can get in Singapore, so make sure you pay attention. Okay, because this is electric, let's talk about the main thing on your mind, which is range. Now, the iX2 can apparently cover 478 kilometers on a single charge, which is pretty impressive because the battery is not huge, it's 64.8 kilowatt hours. But it's NMC chemistry, so it's the kind that you don't want to charge to 100% too often. Now, behind this is an electric motor that drives the front wheels. It's been detuned to 110 kilowatts for Singapore, so about 150 horsepower. And honestly, that makes this car kind of slow and boring to drive. Zero to 100 takes 10.5 seconds. The the benefit of that is you can buy the iX2 with the slightly more affordable category ACOE. That takes the price to $280,888 and that's exactly $20,000 more than the petrol X2 S-Drive 16i. It comes with a 5-year warranty for the car, 8 years warranty for the battery and 6 years of free servicing. So generally speaking, this is the electric version of the X2 which is the coupe version of the X1. Everyone got that? So what I mean by coupe or what BMW means by coupe is that this is basically the same car as the iX1 underneath but it is more sporty looking so you can see how the roof line tapers towards the back and it's not quite so boxy. Other sporty touches, well you get these 20 inch wheels as well as this high gloss shadow line trim. But even though this is meant to be a sporty car, it's also designed to be practical. It's nearly 20 centimeters longer than the previous X2 and something like 6.4 cm taller. And that means more space in here and more space here. When I say more space, what I mean is 560 liters back here. That's quite a lot more than the previous X2, but also quite a bit more than other cars in the class. So let's have a look at what that looks like together. The boot is actually quite nicely shaped, it's pretty deep. There is a lip here that you have to clear, so you've got something heavy to slide out of the car. You're going to want someone to help you out. It's got grocery hooks over here and here. These are my favourite feature. I should point out that the 560 is divided between this upper floor and this compartment down here. But I do like how this is hinged, or there's a catch, so that you can deploy this space more easily. Now, this is an electric car, so I bet you're wondering, is there a frunk? There is not. However, if you do think that you need more space than this, you can easily add 910 litres by folding the rear seats down. But you have to do that from the side. Like so. Now let's check out the back seat together, guys. Before I do that, well, let me show you that you can actually adjust the seat back angle here a little bit. You don't want to sit that way, but you do need just a little bit more space for the boot so you can close it. That's actually quite useful to have. Now, also, when I get in, you can see that I actually have to dip my head quite a bit because of this opening over here, but once I'm inside, I'm actually okay for headroom. Now, I'm 1.75 meters tall. This is my actual driving position. And as you can see, I'm actually okay for legroom, knee room. So that's fine. Headroom is fine. I do want to say that in terms of cabin quality, the first impressions are actually quite good. So you do get some cheap plastics over here and down here. But everywhere else where you might actually touch the car actually feels quite nice. Let's have a look at what else you get. Rear aircon vents, no temperature controls back here, but they're important to have anyway. And a couple of USB-C charging ports, so that is going to be handy on a long drive. I do want to say though that even though you have the space, it's a little bit dark back here and it doesn't feel all that roomy because of the way these windows are shaped. And if you're going to transport three adults, this isn't a very wide car and if you have to sit in the middle here, you're going to have to recline quite a bit or dip your head. Something also worth pointing out is that if you need to fold this rear seat down, you're going to have to get rid of this three-point safety belt and move it out of the way because it descends from the ceiling. But that's quite easily done. It's simply a matter of doing this. And there you are. But overall though, I would say that if you are planning to use your iX2 as a family car, and you have three sort of growing or teenage children, you might want to think about stretching to an iX3.
Okay, people buy BMWs for their design. So in the front of the car, I have to say it is actually very nice. Let's have a look at the dashboard first. Well, okay, premium materials, not really. You do have some cheap and shiny plastics, but some parts of the dashboard are actually nicely padded. I do love the fact that you've got huge aircon vents across the front of the dashboard. Very, very handy in our climate. Some electric cars have these tiny, irritating vents, but not this one. And have a look at the upholstery. This is a vegan material called Veganza, but it's very soft and it does look and feel like leather. And have a look at the colour scheme here. I really love the way this looks and I really like the contrast stitching as well. So this whole cabin is very nice to sit in up front, very easy on the eye. In terms of storage space, well, as you can see, there is quite a lot underneath here. There's a bit of a small compartment over here. And you've got things like cup holders, but um, they don't have those fingers that hold your bottle in place. So this is going to do that all day. That's annoying. Uh, one thing I do really like though, is this clip for your mobile phone. There is wireless charging and there's space enough for you to charge like, I don't know, a mini tablet or something. But it does hold your phone in place, so it doesn't move around like crazy when you drive a BMW like a BMW should be driven. Oh, something I forgot to mention is this design for the steering wheel over here, this spa over here actually looks quite nice and rugged. Now, BMW curved screen design is kind of a standard thing today. In front of me is a 10.25 inch driver display as well as a 10.7 inch touchscreen. Now, I know 10.7 inch doesn't sound very big nowadays, but honestly, as you get bigger and bigger, you don't actually gain that much functionality. I think big screens are more distracting than smaller screens. Besides, this isn't exactly all that small. Now, as you can see, the display is actually very crisp and quite sharp. The graphics are very nice. In terms of the layout, well, it's not as easy to use as BMW's previous systems. But once you know where everything is, you can basically use it like you would a smartphone. And the nice thing about it is that it's customizable. So let's say I want Android here instead of Apple CarPlay. I'll just press and hold this and then I can move it to where I want. Oh, and I'm sure you noticed as well, I can add it to shortcuts. There is this kind of shortcut screen over here, so my favorite apps can live here. Now, in terms of what this car comes with, all the basic and modern uh, kind of apps that you want are there. So Android Auto is wireless, so is Apple CarPlay, but there are a couple of uh, key omissions, I would say. First of all, there's no head-up display. And that's nice to have, especially since this display isn't all that easy to read. The other thing that surprises me is that you don't have a 360 degree monitor for this car. Instead, the reverse camera is just that, a simple reverse camera with kind of sonar sensors. And this car is not that easy to see out of when you're driving. So this only increases the chance that you're gonna trade paint with a car park wall. And given how nice this car looks, that would really be a shame. So that's our quick walkthrough of the BMW iX2 eDrive 20 right here in Singapore. I do have a full video review of the Petrol X2 S-Drive 16i that you can watch. But if you have questions about either car, get in touch with the number below. Or if you want to take one for a test drive, drop me a line and I'll do my best to help you out. Please also consider subscribing. We are a new channel and we could really use your support. That's it from me. Thanks for watching. See you again.